Well, we are back and we are here to talk about the key value area current value. What do you make yeah. of it? Indeed, indeed. So the interesting thing about current value, this that is it is really about looking at the present, mm -hmm. right? It is really understanding what kind of value do we deliver as an organization to to our customers, to our stakeholders, and potentially even ourselves right now. So I think this is this is the part where this is a deceptively hard key value area to look at because most of the time as an as an organization when you look at value it's very aspirational mm -hmm. right it's about what do we want to deliver what do we want our profit to look like what do we want our mar market share to look like but that's not what this is about this is about looking at what's happening right now mm -hmm. and that allows you to make decisions in the here and now, right? We're not talking about hopes. We're not talking about fears. We're literally looking at the scale and seeing, well, how much, how much muscle have I gained today? Yeah. yeah. You know what this always makes me think of current value? It always makes me think of, um, is it makes me think of, we have all these ideas, right? We have all these ideas on the side of things that we think uh, could bring value, right? And so we take an idea or two and we put them out there and we have to validate whether they actually were valuable because it's it's interesting. Well, not every idea turns into value. That's that's the thing. Right. And quite quite often when people have to make um, economical decisions, which is which is really what running a business tends to tends to come down to a lot of the time is um, we, we fall into this trap. Right. The, the sunk cost fallacy where we base a decision on what we hope will happen in the future instead of what we know is the fact today. Yeah. That happens in so many organizations, right? And I mean, how many times I, uh, have you worked on something? I mean, I've worked on things for two years and nobody could even remember why we were doing it. It's just, we had money to spend. So let's continue to spend the money building things and being really busy building things. And you start to ask these questions. You start to ask, well, is what we're doing valuable? Is what we have is, is what we have done in the past valuable, right? Because ultimately, when we're looking at current value, it's a sign of things that we've delivered in the past. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 some sometimes, um, you know, the, the the results of this can be quite stark. Like I, I recently evaluated a major change program that was, I think, six months in. Uh, in, in a process redesign, um, very expensive, like not just in terms of hours spent on it, but also outside investments done. And, and we actually found out, hey, we're, we're a million in the red right now. Um, even if we were to go live with this tomorrow, it would take us five years to make back that million based on what the, what the results of this program were, were going to be, except we can't go live tomorrow. Mm. Right, so our current value right now is negative a million, um, and it's actually going to continue going down. And yet, the the idea of hey, but once we have this thing, we can start cashing in over the next ten years, right? But that's not the reality, right? You have no guarantee that you're going to that you're going to make that money back. So, so this is, like I said, this is really where this is very hard to use because mm -hmm. we don't like looking at the here and now. <laughs> right. Yeah, it right? can be hard to look at. So, so let's take a look, um, maybe how we actually use this in practice in our own businesses. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to move over to this board. Um, and you, you know, Will, just to emphasize some things that we, that we were speaking of, this is, this is a view of the present, right? Yeah. Present. Um, how happy are our customers today? How happy are our employees today? How happy are our investors today? I'm going to put how happy are our customers today, but we can also say, um, I'll put a, uh, investors, employees, and there's a lot of signs of, of, of things that we can measure here, you know, and I, I'm just going to put up a, another point that this really is, well, let's use a validation of what we have delivered. Yeah, absolutely. This is validating what we have delivered. And, you know, uh, I just thought it would be good to capture these points while we had uh, everybody here. And, you know, we've been using the example of our own businesses, which I think is where you were segueing this conversation into. So I suppose uh, for, for you, Will, 
in your own business, uh, how, how are you using current value? Right. So one of the things that, that I did when I started my own business is I, I took a really long and hard look on, on how do I want to get my customers? Uh, right. And, and what I didn't want to do was marketing. Uh, I don't want to do cold calling. I don't want to just send messages out into the world and hope I get a response. So I, I made the decision very early on, on, I want to be the kind of consultant that is referred to by other consultants. Right. I want to come in warm and I want to come in recommended. Mm -hmm. So what I'm measuring in terms of current value um, as, as one of the things to see if that strategy is working is how often do I actually get approached in a week um, by, by people via, via email or via LinkedIn that start with, hey, I was recommended by this and this mm -hmm. person to talk to you. I'm going to put up here, Will, um, referrals. Like, so something that you're measuring current values of is by referrals. Wow, that's a, that's a really that's a really great uh, way of looking at it. That would tell you uh, that would tell you that based on reputation, based off of previous work that you have done, that people have had a positive experience and therefore are getting in contact with you because of that. Absolutely, both from a both from a customer point of view, but also the kind of outreach that you and I both do in our own professional communities, yeah. right? It's one thing to be recommended by by a customer. It's even, in a way, more flattering even when when a professional says, "Okay, I'm going to call in the kind of person that I go to for advice," mm. right? And that to me is kind of a, a sign of you know you've you've delivered that level of expertise, that level of value. I like it. Um, well, I suppose I, I could share then what we do a little bit with this with current uh, value at Agile for Humans. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, for from from our perspective, uh, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit less from a um, from a direct business perspective and more from a delivery perspective because um, obviously you do it the same way. We do consulting. We do a lot of training. Training being one element of our business and. One of the things that we we that we measure in our training is a, a really quick flash in the pan net promoter score. Yeah. So at the end of every class, we have students rank the class from a scale of one to ten. Now we use anonymous mode, right? And then we take that ranking and we store the data, right? And so um, what we do and we look at over time as we trend, um, how really customer satisfaction in the moment on our classes. And that leads us to, uh, to to make changes in the class, changes in the way that we deliver. We get some good comments in there. We look for themes in those comments um, and, and, and ad adapt the delivery of our courses based off of that so that we are constantly trying to increase that. So um, for, for us, uh, our, let's say AF as you said, not Agile for Humans, uh, we could say uh, customer sat after course. Right. And so that's that's just one way um, that that uh, uh, one thing that we measure. And that's really specific to, I, I suppose you could say, uh, one product offering of the company, um, but a, a very important one to us. So and that's and, and you're touching on an important point there in, in using EBM is that, um, you know, you can use it globally, right, to 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 look at the entire portfolio of what you're offering and, and kind of generically what's been the satisfaction there, how happy are the users and, and customers and employees. But for zooming in, it might be the case that for specific products that you have, right? For for me, it's my consulting business. For you, it's, it's, it's the training business that we have specific measures that tell us something about, uh, about that, about the performance there that is more actionable than the stuff at the generic level. I mean, obviously, we both look at what are what do our costs look like and what do our what does our income look like and what do our profits look like but that's not as actionable for 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 improvements as what is the customer satisfaction for any course that we teach or perhaps even for specific courses that we teach or the kind of consultancy that we offer yeah yeah, and, and you know to further uh, to further build on the point that you have. So this is an here's interesting yet super frustrating thing about this. Will let's suppose for us at Agile for Humans, we see a theme in feedback, 
we see a dip in score. And we decide to change our training strategy or the delivery of our materials in a particular way that we think is going to increase the score. Notice I said, we think. Mm -hmm. The frustrating thing is just because we're seeing a theme and collecting data on customers, and maybe we see a dip in NPS across the product owner course or something like that, and we make a change that fulfills that customer desire that we've seen in a theme, that does not mean that our customer satisfaction is going to go up. It really doesn't. So you can have these hypotheses on the back, which we hinted about this earlier, right? And you can deliberately put them into your product and not be able to find causality in it increasing the measure that you want. That's the frustrating thing about complex work, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you're touching on something that we, we want to explore later in this course, but I think is, is, is a particular thing where you and I are very much aligned uh, is indeed this, this idea of causality, uh, establishing causality in a complex environment really is folly. Yeah, right. Is. This idea of, of leading and lagging metrics is one that you need to let go. It is. Want to be successful in, in, in a complex environment, which is why we look at these things daily, right? Frequently as we can. And, and we try to avoid going into assumptions and wishful thinking, right? Which is which is why we started this this class with the tremendous caveat as we're looking at things right now. We're not looking at these things aspirationally because at that point they start getting in our way. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, honestly, I made the mistake of trying to find that causality and it partly drove me crazy. Right. And it was a giant waste of time. It's expensive. So, yeah. It well, well, I think that is a wrap for this one. I think that when we come back, we will be talking about the next KVA. Um, and uh, we look forward to doing that. Hopefully you stick with us for the next episode. Yeah. See you.